Matthew 16, uh, 18 and 19, okay? Uh, actually, we'll go here in verse 19 because uh, the verse here is only in the second part. Okay, verse 19 says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind her shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose in her shall be loose in heaven. What does it mean? If it is God's will, when the church will decide something, it is also accepted of God. Why? Because it is in the four of scriptures. So it's very important that the church will know what is really God's will before executing or before deciding some things. Because if we decide something that is, you know, honored by God, if our decision is not based on the scripture, then we will be accountable to God also. So therefore, it's very important that when we make decisions, it is, you know, uh, it is in the purview of the scriptures, not in our own emotions, not in our own uh, opinions, or uh, not our own or popular opinion, or because many are doing it, you ought to do it. So that's that. That would not be the case. All right, let's go to the zeal uh, needed. The evangelistic uh, spirit of Isaiah is worthy of emulation today. When Isaiah had a vision of himself, a vision of God, and a vision of the lost world. He heard a voice from heaven saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Isaiah 6 said, Here is the right spirit of a volunteer for Jesus, a volunteer with a vision and with a fervor or zeal for the loss. So remember here, Isaiah has an evangelistic spirit. Why? Because when he saw a lot of people needs God, he asked this question, Whom shall I send? Or who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. So there was, God, the Lord was asking, Who shall I send? And who shall, who will go for us? And here Isaiah has an evangelist, uh, evangelistic spirit. He said, Lord, here I am, send me. Now there's a joke for that too. Some people will respond, Lord, Lord, here I am, Lord, send them. <laughs> send them. Here I am, Lord. I'm willing. But don't send me. Send them. But Isaiah said, Lord, here I am. Send me. So he was, he has an evangelistic uh, spirit, uh, evangelistic spirit that he has really a passion. He has that zealousness. Wow, it's so wonderful if the church of Jesus Christ will have the same passion to reach out to those people. Long were the hours and dusty the roads that Jesus spent in seeking to save those who were lost. Jesus was saying here, He was seeking to save those that were lost. And you know what? I have some, some questions regarding, you know, the, you know joining the, the, the Philippine independence. I have a struggle for that for some time. And I was praying, Lord, is it, uh, are we really in the, in, you know, in, in, in the way that you want us to be? And I realized that if you will not go there, how can you know? Right? But it does not mean that we compromise their stand. We just go there to support them. That's why I accept that I will, you know, uh, uh, share an emotional and prayer. Then we accept that the church uh, ministry will also present something. Why? Because it would make a difference. When Jesus Christ was during, during his ministry, he went even to the Pharisees. Those who are against him, those who keep persons who, you know, who's the one who have him killed. He was there. Why? Because he wanted to, you know, to share the gospel. If you are just, if you are hiding in the four corners of this building, how can they know? How can they know that there's a church there, here in Amma, that preaches the gospel if you do not go there and share the gospel? Now, it's different that you will do what we are doing which is not godly, so therefore, we will make a difference. We will make a difference. And I'm so happy, last, uh, last Saturday, um, you know, the leader said, Pastor, it really made a difference. You know, the, you, you, the, you know, the, uh, the prayer that pertains to our country and also to the Filipino community reflected really what is happening. So that's an encouragement, you know, that they were with us. Especially the, our youth and young kids who presented, uh, you know, the people in the Lord, it really touched their heart. Many people were crying, they were in their tears. I 
And that makes a difference because somehow all the gospel tracts were placed on the table. Some were <coughs> taking it and some don't. But we just pray that those who took those gospel tracts, they will read it. And finally, what the Bible says, that they will come to know Christ as the <coughs> Now, it says here, Fervent was the spirit of Paul as he wrote, I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. In Romans 9, 2 and 3, are we this You know, Paul was, said, was so fervent. He was, you know, he had heaviness and continual sorrow in his heart. What does it mean? If he's sharing the gospel and people will not respond, he has the continual sorrow. Is that what you feel that when you share the gospel, nobody's listening or sometimes they just don't care, especially in this country, they'll just laugh at you when you are sharing the gospel. But if you have that heaviness of your heart, you have that fervency of the spirit that, that you want people to come to know Christ, then like Paul he said, I wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren and my kinsmen according to the flesh. Now, he was reaching out to his countrymen, the Jewish people. He wanted all Israel to be saved. But beyond that, he was also ministering to the Gentiles themselves. And he said here, Are we this sincere? Are we this jealous? Again, he wrote, Brethren, my heart's desire prior to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Romans 10 1. To such fervency and zeal, we commit ourselves as church members to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. To Titus, he wrote that God's people should, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, Titus 2, 13 and 14. To be zealous means to be on fire or to be running or pursuing good works. Am I doing this with zeal that I could or share? So this is all it's for us as members of the New Testament Church of Jesus Christ. As his children, do we just allow time to pass without sharing the gospel to the lost people? Now every time I, I contact contacted some friends and my classmates, you know, in high school and in college. I always pray for them. And then when the Lord will open an opportunity that there's someone, so and so, one of our classmates, classmates died, then you know most of the response were unbelievers would say, we will pray for his soul that he will go to heaven. You know, and we will pray for all those, you know what it means. So therefore, I prayed to God, I said, Lord, I will share something that somehow He will open their eyes. Now, I shared there about the gospel, the simple presentation, and I'm just praying that He will respond by faith. And some, you know, give a good comment, oh, uh, I read your, you know, your, your timeline, some emotional things like that. Then, then I started, you know, to converse with them. Because there's a, that's an opportunity. It's not only in the area that we can be in contact with personally, but somehow through the social media that, you know, that is present in our generation, we could use the tool uh, in order that we will hear the gospel of Christ. So the question here is, are we zealous? Are we in fervency of spirit to reach out the lost people for the saving of Christ? So that would be our goal for this year. At least we could share the gospel for one person, just a minimum for one person, mm -hmm. and that person will be saved. And if not, pray for at least three persons this year. Pray for them every day if they are not yet Christians, that they will come to know Christ. Whether they are members of your family or whoever it is, continue to pray until they will be saved. And that will be a glorious day for them. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go now to the questions. We will answer this basically. Number one question. What is the meaning of the term kingdom of our Savior? Mm -hmm. Anyone? <laughs> the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, much more. Not only the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, but there's more for that. Which each of us remember? Each of us. 
the church of which each of us is a member. So when we say here the church or the kingdom of our Savior that refers to CBNBC, it's a local church. Okay? Alright, number two question. To what does Matthew's praise kingdom of heaven refer? The church of Jesus. The church that what? That Jesus established. Okay? Jesus the one who established his church. Number three, how does the term kingdom of heaven differ from the term kingdom of God? What's the difference? Kingdom of heaven refers to the church. Jesus Christ has established the kingdom of God all created in the universe. All right. Number four, when did the kingdom of heaven originate in an organic way? When? It's the first time. In an organic way. During the earthly ministry of Christ, in what way? It's like what? Mustard Beginning seed. like that? Mustard seed. Like, you know what is a mustard seed? That's the smallest seed in the earth in the world. And when that mustard seed would grow into a plant, into a tree, mm -hmm. it's a large, large mm -hmm. big tree. Mm -hmm. So that's how Jesus Christ started his church, mm -hmm. like a mustard seed. Now thousands and millions of people have come to know him in a personal way. Mm -hmm. Alright, number five. To whom or for whose specific benefit were the kingdom of heaven parables spoken? To whom? To whom? To whom does the parable was intended to? Unbeliever. No, to the believers because unbelievers are the to the believers. Two uh, There's only one. Two. Two. To the church. To the church. To the church. It's to the church. Basically, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. Number six. But by what three legal means may the church administer the work of Christ today? What are the three things? Legislative. Number two. Judicial. Executive and judicial okay so that's the function of the church so when there are some issues the church will handle it you know to the membership you know what has part in our church we just follow through what the bible says number seven what does the term case denote to matthew 16 19. it denotes authority okay you know what in the catholic season uh, the case here referring they refer to Peter, who is uh, the claim that he is the first Pope. Let's look here to the to get the here. Matthew 16, 18 and 18. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and follow through. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now they claim that Peter was the first Pope. But the Bible tells us that Peter had a mother-in-law. When you have a mother-in-law, therefore you are married. married. You know? So Peter was married, but the contribution to be a Pope is celibacy. Yes. They're not allowed to get married. Even the priests are not allowed to get married. So therefore, they're, they're, you know, they're claiming that Peter was the first Pope. Uh, does not really correspond to their belief. And another thing is that Peter did not die in Rome. He claimed that Peter was in Rome, but he was not in Rome. I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. There are more study about that, but we'll not take it today. Next is that, um, uh, what is, number eight, what is it to do the binding and loosening of earth? What is to do the binding and loosing earth? What is to do the binding and loosing earth? What is about the binding and loosing earth? What does it mean? Design. Has the decision. Has the authority. 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 So it refers to the church who has the authority to bind and loose, it means to decide. When you say deciding, that's why we'll be raising our hand, or do you, you know, who is in favor, blah, 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 blah. So that is loosing and binding, 
It's uh, accepting or not accepting. Can you understand what it means? Yes. In regards to quotation? Alright, everyone will bind it. It means that we bind together. Uh, it's positive. We say lose, it means uh, we will not uh, you know, accept that. So that is binding or losing. That's about decision, about, about authority. Okay? Now, number nine. In what spirit should one seek to advance the kingdom of our Savior? What type of spirit? What type of spirit Isaiah had? Evangelistic spirit. Evangelistic spirit. It means he has the passion you know, to reach out more souls for the kingdom of God. That zealousness, you know, purple, or fervency. Okay, number 10. Discuss the attitude of Jesus and his disciples in advancing his kingdom. About Jesus. What did Jesus do to advance the kingdom of God? What was his example? He what? What did Jesus do? In order to advance the kingdom, what was he doing? He was? Yeah, Prince of Gospel Bible. He was seeking the to say that word lost. So he was on the passion to reach out the lost people. That's the word of God in Luke 19 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He was seeking, you know, and saving the lost. And what about the apostles? What, what, what did he do for advancing his kingdom? They were what? With two things. It's about Paul was what? He was what? Hmm? What was his behavior? What was his attitude towards the loss? He has a great heaviness. Fervent yeah, spirit. fervency. He was fervent in spirit. Fervent was the spirit of Paul as he wrote, I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. So fervency is means, uh, you know, fervor means a desire or something that you want to achieve. Passion. Passion. And the other word is? Zeal. Zeal. Okay, that is in the last uh, uh, paragraph, to Titus. He was uh, not a zeal, that it means to be on fire, or to be running, or pursuing good works. That's the two things. Jesus was seeking the laws, the apostles were fervent, and as well as were zealous in their uh, advancement for the kingdom of Okay, do you have any questions before we end? Jesus Christ said that it's in Luke 19, Luke 19, 10, yeah, Luke 19, 10. Okay, some more questions? Some more questions or additions? All right. If you don't have any questions, shall we have brother a bit?
I believe uh, it's one of us uh, that uh, we have got a passion in uh, reaching to those people that uh, I think it's something that uh, there is really something that uh, uh, hindering us, like for example, maybe uh, we are afraid to reach the same persons, maybe we can just be, their response will just be negative, and uh, we have to uh, yeah, easily, uh, well, we don't like to hear that, because every every time uh, we want to share the gospel, we want to say, uh, think that people will uh, accept uh, accept what we are uh, sharing. But sharing the gospel, uh, sharing the gospel is uh, really quite difficult. Yes. But we need prayer for that, yeah. and a uh, feeling of the Holy Spirit that uh, it will be uh, the Holy Spirit that will guide us to speak and pray if uh, pray if the time that uh, we will uh, share. Because for me, I sometimes like to. Uh, yeah, share the gospel, especially when I'm out. But uh, the very first thing that I felt is that, uh, oh, I will be rejected. Mm -hmm. uh, they will just uh, reject me, and so that's that. So it's fear. Yeah, fear. the problem is fear. Fear. Yeah. fear because what would the people you know, respond. say or respond? Mm -hmm. Or second, also outside, uh, aside from fear, fear, uh, is a result of not knowing what to say, lack of knowledge. Because if you know something, you're used to it, you're already confident. But if you're not used to it, you're afraid if you're presenting it right. I'll just give you an example. For example, if you, you're working in, in a new job, in a new place, and you're afraid, you know, what would your colleagues or your boss would say because you didn't know what's the norm, you know? And then little by little, you know the, the mechanics and all those, you know, things that you need to do. Then eventually, uh, as time goes on, you know already how to do it. So you are already confident. The same is true in witnessing. If you're not used to it, then you have some fear, you know, how to, how to overcome that fear. And second is the response of the people. If you will just see, uh, so we say statistically, here in Europe, the response of the gospel is very, yeah. so we say, very low. But it does not mean that we as Christians will, you know, will also join with, it, with their unresponsiveness. And that's a, a, a actually a great challenge. But if you have been to another place, another area, <coughs> people's response were so dramatic. In Saudi Arabia, when I was there, you know, many Filipinos were so open to the gospel. Mm -hmm. But here when I share the gospel, it's so very hard. Even though they have already heard, even they have already received Christ, their growth sometimes, you know, hinders them. So there are many, many reasons, many situations why the gospel is, you know, the response of the people are, they are very negative. And there's also some countries, the response is so positive. And in the case here, it's uh, it's in the negative side because uh, many people uh, will say I didn't need God because I have all the riches here in this this, uh, you know, this society, the affluent society. They say I didn't need God, but when you are in a place who are you know who are desperate, then there are, there are people that they are really very open to the gospel. That sometimes are surprised, are you really receiving Christ? Because we did just easily receive Christ. But in the place like here, it's so difficult to, you know, even though you're sharing hard, but the response, their heart is really, you know, it's not yeah. really ready. It's like what Jesus Christ mentioned in the four types of ground. There's a ground, a stony ground, there's a ground uh, of terms, there's a ground on the wayside, and there's also a good ground. So the response of people are really very but it doesn't mean that we will give up. We still continue to go because when Paul was fervent, it, it was not easy for him. He was in prison. It was difficult for him. And when he was in prison, many of his, uh, you know, of the brethren left him alone in prison. And that was so difficult. So even though he was fervent in his, and zealous in his, uh, you know, advancing the kingdom, he has a lot of experiences that we haven't experienced. Uh, we haven't experienced yet. Okay, sister. I, I, I also think, like what you said, that it's in Europe. 
Materialism also, Pastor. I think that's one of the that's reasons reason. that uh, we cannot easily uh, reach people. Materialism, because I can uh, share some uh, uh, Filipinos, uh, but uh, they are very so hard about uh, the gospel. Their hearts are so hard about the gospel, very close about the gospel, because uh, they just think that uh, we live uh, <coughs> nicely here in Denmark. We have everything, and uh, why need God? So I. I have experienced, I have, I've met one Filipino pastor. Actually, yes. when people are in their comfort zone, yeah. Yeah, they do just say, it's okay. very difficult. Yeah. But, you know, when people are having some problems, like for example, they move to another place, this much open to the gospel, or they have uh, trouble in the family, this much more open to the gospel, or they move to another place for work, and this, they're, they're much open to the gospel. They have problems, you know, in the family, they're much open for the gospel, but when people are settled in the place where they are in, they just don't care. They say, I, my life is good. Yeah. I don't need to, <coughs> I have you know, a good life. I have a good life. Yes. I'm okay here. Yes. So they settle in those things. Yes. And that makes them, you know, hard to the gospel. When you present to them, they just laugh at you. And they'll say, oh, I'm not going to church, but I'm, you know, I'm good and helping you know, and all those things. I'm just thinking, if people reject the gospel, because they have uh, their finances mm. are mm. Mm. If that is their you know, uh, argument, it means that their their view on the gospel and God is, is wrong because they're thinking of God by the genie. You know? yeah. Or they can yeah. get something from yeah. him. Mm. So maybe the problem is uh, the way we, we preach the gospel. And preaching is proclaiming, you know. Uh, preaching the gospel should, should be about, it should, it should be radical, you know. You must tell people about their sin, you know. Yeah, and that's then, normally it, it, the way uh, we yeah. do when uh, we share the gospel when we meet. That's really the way uh, we have to, uh, yeah, you know, but uh, it's still, uh, it's, uh, yeah. It's not easy to say that uh, they will really say, yes, okay, yeah, I understand, I accept, no. It takes time, yeah, it takes time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I remember one time, uh, it was an old woman, she was 70 years old. The turning point that she accepted Jesus Christ is that uh, about idols. Because she has lots of idols at home, and she told me that uh, she was praying from Kiapo, this church in Kiapo. Uh, from the uh, door down to the uh, because she has problem with her husband, and when I told her about shared about her the cut about the idols, it was the time that she, uh, it was her turning point that she said, oh, why did I uh, reach seventy years old before? I